So what we'll do is we'll do full screen on this guy. Um, probably be best if I go through my death by PowerPoint slides. <laughs> so okay. Was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Backwards. All right. So um, I'm going to be talking about all players, allplayers.com, and this is kind of a little case study. I've never really done a case study presentation before, so this actually might be like a developer's perspective of a case study. So hopefully, I don't get too deep um, with stuff that we've done as far as technology is concerned, but. As a developer, I find technology extremely interesting, especially whenever you bend and contort Drupal beyond what it was actually intended to do, So, which is what I think at all players we've definitely mastered. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the stuff that we've done. Um, can I have a quick question? Yes. Is this Drupal 6 or 7? This will be a little of both. That's that's what we <laughs> we, we, have Drupal 6 we, we, yeah. we, we twist and contort. I told you. Yeah, we, we're all over the place. Um, so here's our agenda. I want to talk a little bit about all players, uh, who's involved, our process, um, our involvement, and also, also our contributions, and then also taking beat Drupal beyond the limits, which is what we've done. Um, who am I? A lot of you know me, but for those of you who don't, my name is Travis Tidwell. I'm uh, one of the lead developers. I, I lead up the web application development team. Uh, we have four different teams, and I'll go over that here in a little bit. Uh, I've been employed by all players for two years now, which it just seems like yesterday. It's amazing how fast time flies when you're having fun. Um, and also, I've been doing Drupal for about six years, which in, in Drupal terms is actually a pretty long time. I've been, I've been around since about 4.7, so I've, I've been around. Uh, my username is, or my user ID is 98581, and um, you can also find me on GitHub. I have a lot of my code contributions on GitHub if you guys want to just check out some of the projects that I work on. Uh, so let me just talk a little bit about what All Players is. And to really elaborate on what we do, it's actually just best to go to our, our newly designed homepage, which it's completely responsive, so you can go on your mobile phone. And basically, this, this lays it out perfect for me. Um, we basically bring uh, organizations and families together online so that you can spend more time doing the things you love. It's a one-stop one convenience to take care of everything you need to get moving. So what we are primarily involved with is uh, allowing a group or people that want to start a group an easy portal to where they can bring families, they can bring their friends, they can bring anybody that they want to get involved in that group to basically create a, their own homepage, their own website but without needing a website. It's, it's an easy setup for any group or organization to set up their entire org tree in a, in a one place um, website. So that's all players. Um, so we, we're, we like to say that we're pretty much for everyone. Um, we are for parents, we're for league activities, we're great for camps, we're great for coaches and leaders, but it doesn't really stop there. We've kind of been I'm not going to necessarily say we've been uh, pigeonholed into a sports category because we're actually trying to expand outside of sports. So um, if you consider dance, I mean, you know, dance uh, uh, studios uh, would, would love to use our system. And in fact, we're trying to expand ourselves in ways to cover many different um, organizations and groups in particular that want to have some form of web presence. Do any schools use it? Um, we are moving, getting closer to schools as well. But right now, our system is primarily used in sports because that's kind of what it was developed for. But we've developed it in a way to where it's gener generic enough to where it could be used for other things. So let me talk a little bit about who's involved in our company. Um, <laughs> so all that I have listed here is the IT, is dev team. There are a lot of other very, very important people that are, that are involved in our company, but I, did, I just wanted to show the IT team just to give you an idea of the amount of effort that went into actually developing this, this software, to actually developing this technology. We have, um, I think I counted 18 people involved in IT. So we have a number of uh, developers, we have uh, themers, we have, uh, there's Bill, there, you know, Bill Miller, he's our CTO. Um, I could go through all of these names individually, but they're there if, if you guys ever want to um, look and, and check out. That's their, their username on Drupal.org and their, their ID, user number. If you can print that out for me, I can use it for recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are notorious. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> it's actually on Drupal.org. You can go to our player site. So, um, our process. I'll say it's between the favor from the early days. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, let me talk a little bit about our process. Um, I actually think that from a from a dev team perspective and uh, how we've actually got this software to do what it's supposed to do is completely attributed to our, our, our process. We have a very, um, I consider, state-of-the-art process slash just what we use to get things done. We are uh, heavily into Scrum, um, so we use sprints. I'm not going to necessarily explain what Scrum is, so hopefully if you guys know what that is, we use it. <coughs> But it's really not just about Scrum. It's about tying things together that just creates this amazing atmosphere of developing. Um, and in particular, it's tying together Scrum with Git, which is a, a, a version control system. And if any of you guys are thinking about you know, having some form of repository for your code base, you got to use Git. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But then also, we've incorporated uh, a methodology called DevStage Prod. Acquia is probably very familiar with this as well. They have their own Acquia networks to do this for you. But we have our own system of doing DevStage Prod, which um, we've given presentations about just that alone. Because our process with how it involves how we get our development done, how we actually push that to, for testing and staging, and then eventually pushing that out to production, all of these tie together. You know, we, we use we use Git to uh, within our Scrum process. We use DevStage Prod. Uh, we use Git inside DevStage Prod, and that actually ties back to our Scrum process because we have these release cycles and integration period. All of these tie together to create this awesome sauce of just development amazingness. It's it's really great. Um, we also use a heavy use of GitHub, um, which is also integrated with Pivotal Tracker. Now, Pivotal Tracker is a program that is used for Scrum. And if any of you guys have never checked it out, you, you unfortunately you have to pay for it, but it's worth it. It is a great story manager, but it has integrations with GitHub so that we can tie, from reading a story, we could see what commits went into our repository that made that story happen. And this, this kind of just tells you this whole life cycle of, of development it just really is an amazing thing. And so we use that. We also have a very well-defined and documented process. And I know there's a lot of people you know, in, the, in the audience that are probably like, you know, process will bog you down. I think the wrong process will bog you down. If you define your process in a way that is efficient and it also allows for you to iterate on your process, to constantly improve yourself, to have, you know, um, to have retrospectives every three weeks and say, you know what, what did we do wrong? How can we make that better? And what you end up getting is you get a process that's highly tuned to you, to your organization. And I think that's the whole point of Scrum. Scrum is not necessarily go out and buy a textbook to find out what Scrum is. What Scrum is all about is iterating to greatness. You iterate constantly, making your business better. And that's what we've, we've become a master at that. Um, so what we have is a great process for us. Um, also, each developer has their own sandbox, which is a great way to allow developers to basically don't hold back, do what you want, explore, do some great things. And, and our developers are doing some great things. Kill Drupal two or three times a week. Yeah, yeah, it's okay to nuke Drupal. It's okay to, <laughs> it's okay to kill bunnies on our sandbox. Um, so let me talk a little bit of how we use Drupal. Um, so a lot of the contributed projects that we use, I, I didn't, of course we use a lot of other projects. I'm only showing you the projects that really kind of make our project. The first one at the top is organic groups. We are all about organic groups because what I'm about to show you whenever I actually walk you through some of our pages is that we use organic groups for each website. It's like these encapsulated websites that even that the team administrator can administer his own group. It's really cool stuff. We use spaces, features, context. For those of you who are familiar with that top four, it may become clear that we use kind of a open atrium um, type architecture, if any of you guys are familiar with open atrium. Um, we use Webform in ways that I that Webform was never intended to be used for, and I'll kind of talk a little bit about what we're doing with Webform that's truly fascinating. 
view services, messaging and notifications, OAuth rules. We use we use it all, and we and they. Uh, that's what I love about Drupal is all of these things integrate together in such a way that you can really create this masterpiece of software um, just with these contributed modules. Um, so let me just kind of just show you um, some screenshots. I would like to do a walkthrough, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time. So hopefully these, these screenshots will be a good uh, visualization of what our website does. So the first thing that you do whenever you actually create an account and you log in, you get what's kind of like a Facebook-y type page. It's kind of like your own dashboard. And your own dashboard contains all the stuff about you, your calendar, your events, your messages, your family, your friends, your groups, all of these things that involve you. Now, you can manage your accounts, you can change your photos, you can keep up to date with all the, uh, the, the events that are going on in all your groups. Keep in mind, all the groups are on all players. They're on the all players infrastructure. But this keeps track of all of those. All the messages that like a group administrator, you know, practice is canceled. That would go in your messages. Um, here's your family. We have a way for you to set up your kids. Your, so we have user relationships involved here. We have friends, so that's also user relationships. All of this in the user space. Now, user space alone would be a big sell because it's pretty cool what this does. But the true power of all players comes in what we do with groups and how we actually manage groups. So now groups, um, it's, it's really just, it's like a website. It's like within all players, the group actually gets their own website that they can configure themselves. They can choose the colors that they want. Um, they can change photos. They can drag and drop boxes. So we use we use a thing called Dashboard that came from uh, uh, Open Atrium, where you can drag and drop custom boxes to put your own custom content where you want it. Um, we you can open up registrations for your group. So we have a custom registration system. You can do um, uh, you can do all of these things you see here, which you can add an event. You can share photos with everybody that's involved in your group. Uh, you can upload file, you can post an announcement. There's a lot of amazing things that you can do with you, that group. Now keep in mind, all we're using here is OG. OG really makes this thing happen. But another amazing module that comes into play here is Spaces. If any of you guys have never played around with Spaces, it's really cool because what Spaces does is it creates an almost, it's almost like a sandbox around that group. So that you can actually assign in a group administrator and say you are now the administrator of that space. And that opens it up for the group admin, who's not an admin of the site, to do admin-y things. He can manage members of his group. He can, um, he can add content to his group. Well, of course, you can do that in OG by itself. But it also allows you to open up features. So you can actually enable certain features, such as calendar, uh, registration, all of these things you can basically make these turn on off features that the group admin can configure. Here's just another example that you can just how you can just totally customize. Now we don't want to be MySpace here. Where MySpace went wrong is they basically allowed people just to give their own markup and nobody that's one thing that we learned from MySpace is is everyone thinks that they can design a website but they can't. Um, what they end up doing is they put like flashy banners and they just do stupid things. So we try to give them enough flexibility without them just making it look stupid. We still have to protect our brand here. Um, so here's a, just a couple of things um, that you're going to see, like if you're registering. Now here's what I actually showed this as, as a classic example of what we're actually doing to kind of bend the rules a little bit. What you're actually seeing here is web form integration into um, our registration system. So we've actually customized our group registrations to inject web form submissions in the middle of registration. Now here's where this gets really cool. As the person is filling this out, whatever they fill out in that web form becomes their data for that group. So web form essentially, that web form submission acts as almost kind of like an extra layer on top of the user profile. Here's a great example. Let's say I'm involved in soccer and I'm involved in, in football. My jersey number for soccer is 20. My jersey number for football is double zero. In Drupal, this, is, this would be a really hard problem because in Drupal, it just concern, it's just concerned with a user profile as the single entity to inject data. How do you manage 
when that data is different depending on what context you're in. So what we did is we've actually used web forms here to solve that problem. As the person is registering for this group, they are providing data within that context. And that becomes their data. That's what the group admin sees in their group. So they can actually provide different addresses. They can provide different usernames. They can provide a different birth date if they want. The, the point is, is they're not, they're not modifying their profile here. What they're doing is they're modifying how that group sees them which is a really powerful concept and we've kind of taken web form to the next level by introducing that that flexibility and we, we actually contribute a module that does this and it's unfortunate it's only for d6 right now but it's called web form profile which actually creates like this this extra layer of metadata that you can attach to user profiles where they can they can do some really cool stuff um, here's uh, just another example of some of the custom development that went into this we have um, within groups, and it's something I didn't mention, we have group hierarchies. So like the soccer will have all these teams below them that, that, um, that are basically you know, all the teams within soccer. So in every single one of these are their own separate group that may have their own separate group admins. They can upload their own photos. They have their own space. But because these groups have a hierarchy below this group, the group admin up at this group level can do administrative things to all the groups below, such as send on broadcast. Extremely powerful whenever you bring in this hierarchy of groups. And so this is really great for like YMCA's, so like they have that, that natural hierarchy about them. And if they want to do something such as, you know, let's say you have your Dallas branch and a big storm comes and what do you know, all your groups, um, all of their team practices have been canceled. He could simply go to the Dallas group, which has all the Dallas YMCA's below it, click on all of them, send a broadcast, practice has been canceled, and everybody who is a member of all those groups, not only will they get an email, they'll get a text message that says practice is canceled. Extremely powerful. And not did I mention, we provide all of this for free <laughs> to, to anybody who wants it. It's free. And I'll explain how we make money in a little bit, because money is important. You, you saw how many devs we have, okay? Um, so yeah, this is another thing, just how we've built like this really, this custom software that shows all the recipients that are going to get that email. They can, we use a thing called Chosen, which is a, a really uh, great library for making easy to use um, um, text fields where they can click next and, and they can fill out a message. It's pretty cool. I have two, two of the same shot here. We've also built in our own uh, member management system. This is somewhat unwieldy. We're actually thinking about reworking this a little bit because it's just, it's so intimidating. But what's great about this is this kind of shows you how we've opened up administrative capabilities to every group admin. Every group admin, literally, they manage their own group. They administer it, like as if they were administering their own website. You've basically given them the keys to their space. And they can do whatever we want, they want inside that space, which is really cool. They can administer users. They can move users around. They can delete users. They can change data on a user. Keep in mind, all they're changing is their, that user's sub web form submission in that space. So they're not, they're not actually changing the data on the user. Pretty cool stuff. So that right there is just kind of an overview of what we do. That was the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, no joke. It was, it was the tip of the iceberg because I'd love to go into how we make money. In fact, I probably should talk about how we make money. Also, you also left out the whole commerce part. The, the, the whole commerce, yeah. The whole commerce. So, and, and the reason why I left it out is because I have not been leading the commerce team. And so I've been a little bit detached for what the commerce is doing. But let me explain how we make money. I feel like that is the most important. Extended version of it at the Biz Summit. Huh? Right? You're doing an extended session. All we should. We should. Because I... I feel like our model is a great model. It is the open source business model. Everything that you've seen here, we provide for free. You do not pay for it, and there's really no strings attached. How you pay for it is, let's say, is basically, let's say you want to set up registrations for your group. So registrations. Registrations are a big part of groups. That is how they get people on their, their team. And as a parent, 
you want to be able to register your kid online. No parents want to drive to the YMCA anymore and write a check. They don't want to do that. They would rather do this online. So that is a big motivation for groups to get their stuff to use us. Now, as a parent registers, we have this whole commerce thing set up to where we can act, they can actually set it up to where the person pays for that through our website. Now, because we are making all these registrations and all these charges go through us, we've set up very special deals with, with credit, you know, uh, banking and credit companies to where they've lowered our rate enough to where we can actually charge what a group <coughs> admin would normally charge if they were to have their own credit card service, and we've made up the difference with a fee to us. So they're not, char they're not really paying as, what they would, as much as they normally would, but we get, that, we get that extra cut because we have bulk quantities. This is, this is the whole idea. This is why Walmart makes so much money, is because they are allowed to, because they have such, so much buying power, people want to heavily discount their stuff so that Walmart will do it. And what Walmart does is they just fill in the gaps. So the people were paying what they normally would, maybe a little less, and then Walmart takes that little cut for themselves. It's a great, it's a great business model, and, they're, they, and really everyone wins. It's a situation where everyone wins. And whenever you find that type of karma, especially like in, in e-commerce, you know you're going to make a lot of money because the, the group admins getting what they want, the parents getting what they want, they're paying what they normally would, the group admins making as much as he normally would, even if he went with his own credit, you know, processing company, and of course we're getting that little tiny um, um, uh, percentage of every charge that comes to our site to help maintain our business. So you're like a subgroup of PayPal, and you handle each kind of charges. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yep. So, so uh, they don't have to set up the payment gateway. The they gateway. don't have to do any of that. We've already done that for them. Um, but and I'll, and I'll kind of talk about the, what we've got with our commerce is it really is truly amazing. And what we've contributed back to Drupal Commerce is great because that's our Drupal 7 aspect of store. And we had a big foot in a lot of contributions that went into Drupal Commerce, especially when it comes to dealing with multiple vendors. Now keep in mind, every single group, they want to basically manage their own, but they might have their own merchant ID. And so they, they don't want to use our merchant ID. They want to use their merchant ID and have people use us. So we've actually set it up so these all of these different groups can basically be their own store. And they can set up shop on us as if they were their own store. And so we've, we've actually made contributions to Drupal Commerce that allow for that. Really cool stuff. So let me talk about our contributions since I've, that's going to be a great segue into what we've contributed. We've actually contributed more than I could actually fit on a slide. Um, and these are in no particular order. Like the most significant project is not on top. These are just kind of scattered throughout this, this presentation. But the point is, is we've done a lot of stuff to Drupal. We've contributed, as you can see, all these Drupal.org projects, um, which there's even more than that. Um, I, only, I only copied and pasted with what I had time to. Um, but as you can see, we have a lot of these commerce, commerce reverse payments, commerce ad hoc payments. All of these were projects that we had a big hand in, if not contributed the entire thing to. Um, so All Players has done some really cool stuff. Uh, Webform profile. We have a lot of um, GitHub um, account activity. Um, Peter Drake has been doing a lot with uh, Puppet, so he's contributed a lot back to the Puppet community as far as doing like server automation and some really um, some really cool stuff. Mentioned the trace stuff. <laughs> Yeah, so he's been doing a lot with like Puppet Traceolytics. He has a Traceolytics module out there that he's been working on. Just a lot of some really cool uh, modules. So let me just talk a little bit more about going beyond the limits. I kind of did touch a lot on this during the previous slides, but let me just, just inform you with what we're up against. So we have a Drupal 6 based web application. And I know a lot of you are saying, you know, why in the world have you guys not migrated to 7? If you saw how many contributed modules we have and how many custom development that we've done, you would easily understand how that would just, that is a feat beyond what we're capable of doing right now. But what's, what's the good news is, is Drupal 6 is actually a fantastic platform to build on. It really is. It's really great. Excuse me. There are some things that are kind of annoying. You know, I feel like the, the fact that you don't have entities in 6 is really a pain. 
because um, you have to do things that, that would otherwise be real easy in Drupal 7. Um, but I've already touched on what we're doing with group hierarchy. Um, we also have that custom group registration system that we built. And the reason why we had to do that besides just the what comes from organic groups is because we have an extremely uh, complex workflow, especially if it is a parent registering their child. The parent has to create the account first and then associate the child to that account because according to COPA, a child under 13 cannot belong to a website without a guardian and being involved. So we have to, we have to handle some really complex situations, especially with group registration. The custom broadcast, which, I, which you guys just got a, uh, got a peek at, and then also uh, user, uh, web form used as, as user data per group. I've actually done a presentation on this. If you guys want to go look, and I actually go into de detail on what All Players does, go and watch that YouTube video, and I'll, I, I go through kind of what, we do, what we're doing with web forms. Also, custom group reporting and management, I showed you a little bit of that. <coughs> and then on the Drupal 7 side is our store. Uh, we're using Drupal Commerce. I wish I could put more bullets here, but it's like, like it's, um, it, they're doing some amazing things, and uh, I don't understand a lot of it, so we are going to have to have Glenn come and, and give us an overview of how all players is using commerce. Uh, but I do know each group has their own store. We have Drupal Commerce, and everything between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 is completely restful. And for those of you who don't know what that, what that means is, is these are basically two completely separate entities that behave like they are one through like this back-end communication. And uh, I feel like we've kind of mastered REST in Drupal. Um, we've we've uh, used services module. We've built our own custom endpoints. And we've done some really cool stuff by, by making uh, Drupal RESTful. And also we're using Bakery, which is used on Drupal.org for their groups and also the actual main website. Bakery, we've actually contributed a lot back to Bakery because we found a lot of bugs with it. Um, we're using that for our single sign-on. So those are some of the stuff that we're using. Uh, but primarily, it's Drupal 6, Drupal 7, and it's awesome. It's really cool. Uh, it's, it's very rewarding to have to uh, kind of do what Amazon does and like force that compartmentalization and say, you know, you're only going to communicate me if, through a RESTful call and no magic involved because what's, what we're able to do with that is we've now allowed ourselves to, we've opened ourselves up to partners who are able to communicate to our system using the same RESTful calls that the store uses or it uses the exact same calls but we've opened ourselves up for integration with third parties. It's really, it's been a great, great experience. Um, demo time if time permits, I don't think it does. Um, so now, questions? Yes? So with the uh, RESTful implementation, are you using like a uh, hypermedia subset or it's like a straight call? A hypermedia subset. So like, um, when you look at RESTful implementations, they've got like this new additional level called the hypermedia, where it's kind of like a web page. It acts exactly like a web page. We're, we're moving that direction. We haven't quite got it all worked out mm -hmm. where you can just call one call after another with the, get with the information. Yeah, right. the I mean it's pretty close. I mean, uh, it's just not every single, not every single endpoint has a has the data to move on to another endpoint. Particularly because you have a, you have the public part and then you have the authenticated part and trying to move between the two is it, that's where you have to log in and stuff. We just haven't got there yet. Okay. And what about custom background? Let's just say if you have a site, let's just say it's just use rivals.com and they want to do a seven on seven camp. Is there a way to have a link and have the site custom but powered by all players or so uh, it sounds like what you're asking for is to have like the total integrations with um, all players so that they can actually like inject the like maybe the registration in, in their own web page. Is that what you're right? Um, so that is actually we are moving in that direction of and that's one thing that we're actually doing by exposing those APIs is we're actually allowing ourselves to build like so, uh, widgets like almost embeddable widgets to integrate with our system. A great example of that is very recently, um, in fact, it's something I've been working on, is a, is a group navigator widget that uses our RESTful endpoints to actually show the group tree and you can find groups. So it's like a, 
it's like a search group tool that you can actually embed in other places. And but as far as like being completely 100% embeddable, we're not quite there yet. But so we're, basically, it would just be a link. It so would it would end up being uh, on that side. It would say, hey, register for this group, and it would be kind of like PayPal. They're actually navigated to a a page that looks similar. You can use your logo. <coughs> they can walk through the group registration, and and then they're registered for Which your group that way. Kind of, kind of does that though, don't they? Or they they they're using it, but not for registrations. Okay. They're they're doing it to like to create groups and that type of stuff. Any other questions? Okay, guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.